The LA Clippers looked like they were in for a rough one in their final game before the All-Star break on Wednesday night against the Golden State Warriors. But what was actually one of the more enjoyable Wins of the season, coming back from 15 down for an explosive fourth quarter. Norman Powell getting hot from three. James Harden and Paul George leading the way, and some big plays late from Russell Westbrook, Terrence Mann, and Amir Coffey to get the job done. A team win indeed. Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Comeback Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir, you are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Viziri, born and raised in L.A. and in my 19th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more L.A. NBA and L.A. Clipper content. And Locked On Clippers is free and available for all things L.A. Clippers five days a week. You can follow us wherever you get your podcast and of course subscribe on youtube hit the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video and your la clippers head to the all-star break with a record of 36 and 17 is it 37 and 17 it's 36 and 17 okay 36 and 17 with a big win against the Golden State Warriors at the Chase Center. We have now won the season series against them three games to one. And it was really the fourth quarter where we took off. It was a big time team win. I'm going to be talking about all the performances, the individual efforts that led to this team win. And James Harden, for me, my player of the game, going to be talking about the way he was able to kind of dictate the flow for us all game long and keep us in it with his shot creation but fourth quarter magic that's what it came down to the Warriors were in control of this game the whole way they'd won five games in a row of course we don't have Kawhi who's out with that adductor strain by the way Christina Pink did say that He is expected to be back when the NBA season resumes so that's a good sign and it was also a good sign that Kawhi was traveling with the team Now, Amir Coffey started in his place. The Warriors have won five games in a row, and I could see very quickly why. Jonathan Kaminga playing at an extremely high level, averaging 20 points a game in the month of January, and he was all over the place early on with putbacks, finishing in transition, just showing his athleticism. But the Clippers, as far as the way we started, James Harden, The Warriors started Draymond Green at the five, and on the pick and rolls with James Harden, he was in that high drop, and James Harden scored five points right away on it, first with a little step back against Andrew Wiggins, and then a three ball coming off a screen against Jonathan Kaminga. Paul George also had seven points in the first quarter, so uh, Paul with seven in the first, Harden with five in the first, but the Clippers were down 30-23 to after one. We'd go down by as many as 15 in the second, and I think the main reason was... One, we weren't hitting our three ball. Uh, But two, I talked about when I previewed this game that the Clippers, when you play the Golden State Warriors, and without Chris Paul, they play a lot more like the Warriors that we're accustomed to seeing. A lot of movement, a lot of off-ball movement, a lot of Steph Curry running, you know, around several screens. You can never be too complacent. You have to be attached and you have to be talking. There are some teams, you know, you can sag off of guys and you won't get punished. But against the Warriors, those guys that are getting sagged off, they'll go and set a screen. So the guy they're setting a screen for is walking into empty space because you are not playing tightly on the screener. So they make you pay with all these things. You need to have your communication on you know, pinpoint, it cannot be a game where you're quiet. And I thought in the first half, the Clippers had several miscommunications. Terrence Mann and Russell Westbrook, who have been two of the better on-ball defenders for the Clippers this season, were not frequently attached to their man. Terrence got beat back door twice in the first half. Russ was not sitting in any stance, not fighting over any screens, was detached off the ball. And then Norman Powell got beat three times in the first half on the ball. 
So the and in transition, there were several times where the Clippers were not talking. There was one time where Terrence left Brandon Pajimski open, but it was purposeful because Steph he didn't want to leave Steph Curry. And there are times where Steph Curry gets so much attention that guys are just letting. And one time we let Draymond Green have it. I think it was Paul George just letting guys go in for rim runs. How many times have we seen that over the course of Steph Curry's career, where his gravitational pull? takes the defender to the three-point line, and in turn allows a wide-open layup. So those were kind of frustrating. But yeah, the Clippers, even after made Warriors baskets, they weren't really getting back like that. We trailed at the half 59-52. to It wasn't as bad as it initially could have been. And we were down by 15. But the ending to the second quarter was good. And I thought James Harden that whole quarter was just excellent in the pick and roll, taking advantage of that high drop. They weren't switching Steph Curry on him like that. They were just showing and recovering in the first half. And as far as their matchups, they had Wiggins on Harden, Kaminga on Paul George, Draymond on Zoo, Clay on Amir Coffey, and Steph on Terrence Mann. And then we had Amir on Steph to start, but we had Terrence on Steph in the beginning of the third quarter. Uh, Terrence on Kaminga when Amir was on Steph and vice versa. Zoo on Dre, Amir Coffey, I already mentioned him, PG on Clay, and then Harden on Wiggins. We were switching one through four, and then Zoo was in that high drop. He got burned a couple of times by Steph. By Clay, not so much. Plumlee was also in that drop. And man, Steph Curry was cooking us all game. He had 41 points. He had 18 in the first half, and every single time we made a mistake, it felt like he would punish us, whether we didn't secure a rebound or like there was one time where Amir Coffey threw the ball away in the backcourt. Russ couldn't secure a rebound because he only went with one hand, and Steph made us pay with a three. As far as the dubs, I already mentioned they were switching four through two. They were not uh, switching Steph on a Harden in the first half, and Draymond the same. He was in drop coverage, and I thought Harden did a great job of taking advantage of the fact that the Warriors have no seven-footer. They have no real rim protector, so he went right into the chest and got some easy shots in that first half, especially in that second quarter. And in that second quarter, James Harden played the entire quarter and had 13 points and five rebounds. And one thing we needed to get without Kawhi was more rebounding from our other guys, meaning not just David Zubats and Mason Plumley, And a guy like James Harden, he really stepped up and got us some rebounds, eight of them to be exact. And the Clippers broke even in the second quarter at 29. But... We cut it from 15 to 7. It was looking ugly, but James Harden had a big step back to lead us to an 8-0 run after the Warriors went on a 12-1 run. So we cut the game or cut their lead from 15 to 7. And without Chris Paul, the Warriors are going to play a lot more of their style of basketball, which is fast. And we were not ready for it. Also, no Amir Coffey in the second quarter entirely. I thought that was very interesting. Russ... Uh, got taken out pretty quickly after his first stint in the in the first half, but then he came back later in the second quarter, and he had his good and bad moments in the first half. As I said, it was the same thing with Terrence Mann. They had some good moments where they were cutting, found open guys when they were cutting or on the break, but they were not hitting their threes, and defensively, I thought first half, they weren't quite good enough. But like, for example, in the first half, Russell Westbrook was 2 for 7, 0 for 2 from 3, 5 points. Third quarter... Man, Zubats, I thought, started out the quarter really well. And I thought Zoo in this game looked a lot more like his normal self. Finishing around the basket. He had that jump hook over Draymond in the third. That drop step and dunk was protecting the rim well. And I thought he and Mason Plumley, And Mason Plumley had one of his better games of the season for me. I thought they both did a really good job on those short rolls because, again, they're in that high drop with Harden, and Harden did an excellent job of finding his open teammates all night, whether it be cross-court passes in the pick and roll, passes up ahead, just throwing it ahead in transition, or those pocket passes, and he found the bigs frequently for those pocket passes, and they made some good decisions on the short roll, and I thought Terrence Mann and Russ did a fantastic job cutting baseline. The both of them got several buckets that way. Uh, Terrence also, I thought, did a pretty solid job of leaking out. So even though his three wasn't falling, and I, only one of them was a bad shot, and yeah, it did get a little frustrating, and right now it seems like Terrence is going back into a three-point slump, which he's been shooting really well in the new calendar year, 2024, 
Hopefully it's not serious. I love that he made that three at the end of the third. That maybe gave him some confidence and momentum. But all the other stuff offensively, I thought he was really good. He was attacking. He was making good passes. He got four assists in this game. Two offensive rebounds, including the one that sealed the game. And I thought in transition, he had some nice drop-offs as well. So solid stuff overall outside of the missed threes. And I think the same for Russ. Although Russ, he was a little loosey-goosey with the ball. Uh, he had two turnovers in the game. And in the third quarter, he had a really bad ending to the quarter where he was playing super fast, had a bad two-for-one shot. And I don't like Russ getting the shot on the two-for-ones. He just shoots a bunch of threes. And he didn't follow the rule this game. He was 0 for 2 from 3, shot the third, missed, and didn't get back when he missed it. It was also a time in the second quarter where Harden wanted to foul on the step-back three, missed, and didn't get back. So our transition defense in the... First three quarters I thought was not good enough. We got outscored 38-34 in the third. But again, we were just kind of hanging around. And in the fourth quarter, we lit them up. And it started with Norman Powell. 12 points in the fourth. Four for four from three. Just went lights out. And he hadn't really gotten going. I thought he was bad defensively up to that point. But the way he lit it up. Two left corner threes and almost all of them coming from James Harden. Whether it be him targeting Stephen Pods late in the game in isolation, which he did, and he sometimes saw two bodies, that gets the defense moving. The amount of hockey assists James Harden had was amazing, and that's something that doesn't go in the stat sheet, but was very effective. And then Paul George to start the fourth quarter. Really aggressive. He was 0 for 6. We're talking about Terrence Mann and Russ missing threes. Paul George was 0 for 6 from 3 in the third. And 1 for 7 from 3 overall. But in the fourth quarter, he started posting up Gary Payton. And what did I talk about last game? Stop making the game complicated. Get in the post at the elbow. He created a defensive three-second violation. Got a bucket. They doubled. He found Norman Powell for 3. And it led us to a 10-0 run and what ended up being a 17-2 run in that fourth quarter. And Paul George was the kickstarter. And then Russell Westbrook started getting going, crashing the boards, found Paul George on a nice back cut, which I've, we've been seeing more of lately, PG back cutting. And then the offensive rebound and dish to Zoo. And then Norm, as I said, just continued to scorch. We had to get by without Paul George, who committed a reckless sixth foul, reaching for no reason, and James Harden was still able to get us across the finish line, finding open guys, and Russ's Euro step kick out to Coffee for the open three, that's when I knew we had them. And it's funny because the Warriors still made it tough, but Klay Thompson some, somehow, I don't know why, fouled Russell Westbrook late in the game. Russ made two huge clutch free throws, just like game one of the playoffs. And then Terrence Mann comes back in, saves the game with the big offensive rebound tip to Amir Coffey. Or should I say seal the game, not saved. And we get the win, 130-125. to 125. And coming up, going to go more in depth about the individual performances in this game because we got a lot to talk about. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April, April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with the 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker dealer. 
Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, Clippers winning this one, 130-125. to Gutsy win in the Bay. And I have to say, i got to give a shout-out to our coach, Ty Lu. Those calls in the beginning of the fourth were crazy. First, Mason Plumley. that was not a play on the ball by Draymond. And all Ty Lu asked was, James, did he go for the ball? And he got hit with a tech by that white ref. So frustrating. I don't blame him for getting that tech. And then when... Mason Plumley gets fouled by Draymond Green and they call him nothing. He gets frustrated, slaps Pods, who had an insane game, by the way. Oh, my God. He was getting so annoying. Making his threes, taking charges, making the right plays. They love him over there. I saw him at Santa Clara whoop Pepperdine, one of the, the most impressive college performance I've ever seen live. So he continues to torment me, but thankfully we won. But the point is, Mason Plumley was swinging at it and... Okay, he didn't make a play on the ball, but they reviewed that one and not ours. Insane. So Ty Lu had every right to get ejected. I don't blame him. He was fighting for his players, and they responded. Shout out to Dan Craig. Did a good job when he took over, but it's Ty's scheme. It's Ty's game plan. Big time by the coach, man. I love how he stood up for his players, made a statement, and they responded. And I got to give a shout out to Mason Plumley. When I talk about this is a team win, Mason Plumley, I thought he had his best game in a long time. His defense was really solid in that high drop. If you're wondering, what about the times he left Klay Thompson open? That was clearly the scheme to leave Klay open for those shots because it worked. Klay Thompson shot four for 14 from the field and one for nine from three. Mason Plumley, I thought, did a decent job of containing in the pick and roll and not letting Steph just come off for wide open shots. He did a good job of knowing his personnel, knowing when to do certain things defensively. I can't think of all of them off the top of my head. He rebounded. He finished. He made good decisions in the short roll. I thought he had a very solid game and one of his better defensive games. Eight points, six boards, three assists, one steal. Two of those are offensive rebounds. He was three for six from the field, two for three from deep. I'm sorry, from the foul line in 16 minutes. We got some Brandon Boston run in this game, and I don't think he did anything wrong, but he just missed open shots. Again, I don't think that missing open shots, unless it gets super detrimental, is that big a deal in basketball. I think that's the the work that's not even like a, a thing I get mad about. Because sometimes the shot is not going to fall. You need to take those shots to keep the defense honest. If it becomes a consistent theme, then okay. But I get more mad about decision-making things and th things of that nature. You know, if you do the right things, that's all that matters to me. Speaking of doing the right things, though, Norman Powell. We outscored the Warriors 44-28 in the fourth. And the way he was able to just get hot like that, 21 points, 8 for 13 shooting, 5 for 7 from 3. With the scar or that mark looking like he's 21 Savage out there. Big time shooting from Norm. Again, how many times have we seen that this season from him? But man, Russell Westbrook. How about that fourth quarter he had? Let me just read you his stats for the fourth alone. 10 points, 4 boards, 3 dimes, a steal, no turnovers, plus 16. He played every minute of the fourth. So did Norm. So did James. And Russ and Norm were both 4 for 6 from the field in the fourth. Russ made both of his free throws. Norm, of course, 4 for 4 from 3. I mean, Russ on the, on the offensive glass. I mean, come on. Three offensive rebounds in the fourth. Four of them in the game. The guy is just relentless. And when you give him an extended stretch, he'll have his bad, but he'll always make up for it with the good, it seems. Or a lot of times he will. And remember, it's not the Timberwolves. They don't have a rim protector. This is a good matchup for uh, Russ. And it felt, felt like the Warriors, they really let this one slip out of their fingers. They should have had this one, and they didn't. And I, I'm just telling you, it was great stuff from the entire team. Again, even though Terrence couldn't make a three, stayed cutting, stayed finding the open man and doing the right things, and stayed shooting them, which I love. So solid there. Amir, big-time shooting. How about Amir's stat line in this game? 14 points, six boards, one turnover on four for seven shooting and two for four from three and four for four from the line in 24 minutes. The guy continues to be efficient and effective. And Terrence, man, nine points, five boards, four assists, just one turnover, and it was on that 
offensive foul against pods that we challenged and we didn't win. Three for eight from the field, one for six from three. He played 28 minutes. I do have a critique with the free throws. We missed eight free throws and we shot 37 of them. 19 more than the Warriors, but because we went to the basket more and they just shoot a lot of threes. Steph Curry alone shot 19 threes. But uh, Terrence, two for four from the line. Russ, three for five from the line. Those are the two guys mainly that I wanted to call out on that. Uh, but Terrence, three for eight from the field. He was two for two from two, but one for six from three. Thankfully, he made that last one. Hopefully, gives him some confidence going into the All-Star break. But yeah, coming up. Going to be talking more about the performance of the Stars and especially my player of the game in this one, James Harden. I got to tell you a little something about Hungry Root. Hungry Root is your partner in healthy living. It's the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality groceries and simple, healthy recipes delivered to your door. Take a fun, short quiz, and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, the kitchen appliances you use, and more. Then, they'll build you a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week and give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to good use. Hungry Root will recommend recipes and groceries based on your personal tastes, but each order is fully customizable. Take their suggestions or choose anything you want. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Locked On Clippers listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash Locked On to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash Locked On. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. All right, Clippers winning this one and moving on to 3-2 without Kawhi Leonard. And ideally, these are the kind of games in which you made the trade for James Harden. So James, I thought he was my player of the game. He was absolutely incredible, in my opinion, killing them in the pick and roll all night long. And even though we weren't hitting our threes, he continued to make great passes and finding those open guys. And he was also aggressive scoring the ball as well. So James Harden in this game, 26 points. Eight rebounds, seven assists, just one turnover, seven for 12 from the field, four for nine from three, eight for nine from the line, and he was tied for a game high, plus 13 with Ivica Zubats. James played 40 minutes, so he needs that all-star break, and I'm happy he's not going to Indiana, but boy, does he deserve to be an all-star, just like some other guys that didn't make the team, because... He's been playing at a high level all year, and we don't get that win without him. He was spectacular. I got not much to say about him, and... I thought it was one of his better defensive games of the season. They tried to go at him a bit, and he stood up to the task against Steph. Got away with a bit of hand checking, but look, I mean, if he when when he does, he does a decent job staying in front. It's amazing what people, hey, the hand check can still do at an NBA level when it's allowed. Um, and I thought he did a good job of just being active and knowing he's got to close out on shooters, putting a hand up. And having a sense of urgency that, okay, Steph and Clay, I got to get a hand up. And he one time there was a possession in the third quarter, I believe it was, where he had two good contests on Clay Thompson in the same possession. And then he blocked Steph Curry at one point in the first half. So excellent all-around game from James Harden. I have no critiques. If he plays like that in the playoffs, we are set to do some special, special things. And Paul George, even though he had a bonehead sixth foul, I thought... He was really solid with his aggression in that fourth quarter when he was going at Gary Payton the second. He was, you know, going into his chest and playing physical, not shying away from it, back to basket, elbow, and you saw the commotion and this havoc that he was causing. 24 points, and he also made some really good passes today, Paul George. There was that one he had to Terrence Mann in transition where he threw it around his back, kind of. Not a behind-the-back pass, but threw it around his back with two hands. And then that bounce pass to Mason Plumley when he got raked by Draymond Green was nice. Paul had 24 points, five rebounds, five assists, two steals, one block. He did have two turnovers, though. Shot eight for 17 from the field, one for seven from three, seven for eight from the line. And finally, it felt like in that fourth quarter, he was getting a good whistle. Clippers shot 50% from the field. Warriors shot 46% from the field and shot 15 more shots, but the Clippers shot 19 more free throws. We shot 78% from the line. They shot 72% from the line. We shot 34% from three. They shot 38% from three. 
Offensive rebounds, they were killing us in the beginning. They had 13 for the game. We had 12. We kind of evened it out with Russ, Terrence towards the end. And we had 12 turnovers. They had nine. So, okay in the turnover department for me. We had eight more points in the paint than them. And our largest lead was seven, and we got the job done. By the way, Ivitsia Zubats, double-double, 13 points, 10 rebounds, looking a lot more like himself, three assists, two steals, two blocks. I don't know if I mentioned that jump hook he had over Draymond and that drop step he had in the third quarter, dunk. I may have. I've done two shows tonight, so I'm exhausted. But big-time performance, and it's the right way to go into the All-Star break. 53 games in, 36 and 17, Clipper Nation. It's a great time to be a Clipper fan. This is our best team ever. And I've already said I was wrong about the Harden trade now because I don't think we'd be flirting with the one seed without him. I really don't. I do have my reservations for the playoffs and the title, but the way Russ has sacrificed by going to the bench, which I never expected, that was probably my biggest L of all, was underestimating that, underestimating that sacrifice that he was willing to make still for his friend. James Harden, I thought, I think has done just about what I expected, but even a little bit better in terms of the way he's gotten everybody involved and defended uh, consistently. And yeah, we're flirting with the one seed. And I don't think we would have been there without James Harden making that trade. I think we still would have been a very solid team, better than most people think, especially with the health of Kawhi and Paul. But flirting with the one seed, probably not. So shout out to James Harden. He's my player of the game in this one. And it was a great team win. One of my absolute favorites of the season. By the way, Bones Highland and P.J. Tucker not traveling with the team. Apparently, they'll rejoin them after the All-Star break. We've heard a lot about P.J. Tucker wanting to be moved, wanting to get minutes on a contender. I mentioned in the last episode, I don't think he's good enough for that anymore. And I guess it's kind of messed up that we didn't try to trade him or whatnot. But nobody wants his contract. And then Bones, it sucks to hear that, you know, it seems like he's finally kind of at his wit's end with... At first, he was cool sacrificing, but Russ and Harden aren't getting hurt, and he's not really getting minutes, and he left Denver to get some minutes, and he was getting it, and then we got Harden, and now it's like, man. We probably should have tried to trade him and go all in and get a four or something because he's not going to be used this year, and I don't know if he's going to want to stay, especially if we want to bring Harden and Russ back, but that all depends on how this uh, playoffs go. But anyway, big time win. We'll see you soon. The Clippers win at 130-125. to 125. Oh, that was satisfying. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, where I talked about every single Western Conference team and timestamped it. So check that out. And talked about this game as well right after, or a couple hours after, actually. Locked on Clippers, free and available wherever you get your pods. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Hit the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers. I would love to hit that by the time we resume play. Can we do that? That's a challenge. Can we hit 5,000 subscribers on YouTube on the next time we play? If you guys do, you're the greatest fan base in the world. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers.